All right, I'm going to do my top 10. Number one is Georgia. I think that that's pretty clear at this point, although they didn't absolutely kill it against Sanford today. I do think there are question marks around Georgia, given how much they lost off of the, the team last year. But right now, with everybody else's struggles, they're number one. Ohio State is number two for me. I, and this is where I had Alabama last week. So I did rank Georgia number one last week, num Alabama number two. I think at this point, given what we saw and given how we see how stubborn Bill O'Brien is with this offense and doing the late checks and snapping the ball one second every single time, until I see that corrected and until I see them just absolutely dominate a team, maybe even on the road, because that seems to be a big problem for this Alabama team, I'm not going to have Alabama in the top two. Um, Ohio State, for me, like they didn't do anything special. Arkansas State's not a good football team, but Ohio State – did beat Notre Dame last week. Um, it was at home, um, but they I don't have the benefit of seeing how they play on the road at Texas, so I have to assume that they would do a little better, and I think they would. Clemson is number three. Um, this is one where I still have questions about this team. I don't know. Like I think that they are limited, even though he went off today. They're limited at quarterback, and I think that they could be a national championship team very similar to 2018 where they benched Kelly Bryant um, for someone named Trevor Lawrence. I think that they've got someone on deck that's even better, um, and they have a hard ceiling with DJU. I have dropped Alabama to number four, um, and a lot of Alabama fans are going to say, we won on the road, um, you're dinging us too much, but we have to look at the data we have. We have an Alabama team that killed a team that is really bad. Like Utah State is maybe they've gone from an 11 win team last year to maybe one of the worst teams in the country. Um, so we can't take anything from that game. And the game today, uh, I didn't see a lot that showed me that a lot like the Ohio State Notre Dame game. I didn't see a lot that showed me that that Texas is an elite team in any way, but just that Alabama wasn't. Very good. So I've got them at number four. Number five is Michigan, and I'm going to continue to keep them there until they play somebody with a pulse. And everybody's going to say, well, they're killing Hawaii right now. But I want to remind everyone, I think Hawaii lost to Vanderbilt 63-10. to 10. Correct yeah, me in the chat. Yeah, Hawaii, Hawaii lost. I thought, I thought it was 59, but it may have been 63. But Hawaii had an issue with Todd Graham, the coach, that had a, a, abuse allegations most of the players were from the mainland, and so they said to heck with this. I don't want to come back, and they all transferred out. Hawaii is not just probably the worst team in the country, but they're historically bad. Um, Vanderbilt, who was not a good team, just ran them out of the stadium. So don't judge anyone at any point this year based on a Hawaii game. Yeah, and just to put it in perspective for Michigan, they have three out of they don't have a they don't have a P five out of conference team this year on their schedule. The three and nine 21 Colorado State team that lost to Utah State by 20 points is the best team on Michigan's schedule this year. Because the other team after Hawaii is UConn, who went one and 11 last year and eked out a win against Yale. Number six, I've got USC, but I have some questions. So last week they killed Rice, this week 41 28 against Stanford and I know they got up big early but something tells me that the defense demons have followed Lincoln Riley to Southern California USC number six it's going to be so hard to tell anybody out of the pack uh, pack whatever 12 this year just because we saw Utah really struggle with Florida and lose I don't know how good they are there's not a lot of good data of Pac-12 teams venturing out and playing other Power 5 teams to give us a point of reference. Oklahoma at number seven. They played a cupcake, cupcake today. Still don't know much. I am very high on Venables, um, kind of like Aranda at BYU. I think he's a good coach, a good coordinator, who's going to make a great head coach as long as he can stay away from the Coke. Um, Michigan State number eight. Josh, I know this is another team that didn't play a – Great team today, but now we're getting into the territory of I got to put somebody here, right? 
and Michigan State is number eight for me. Baylor, if they win, is number nine. I don't want to swap them with Oklahoma State so much if Baylor does lose because Oklahoma State gave up 44 last week, and I think they put on a late touchdown but really struggled with a mediocre Arizona State team this week. So I'm not very high on Oklahoma State if Baylor loses. If Baylor does lose, um, the Big 12 is going to be interesting because I don't think that there's a team, maybe Oklahoma, but everybody else is is pretty bad. And Josh, I really struggled with this, and I can't wait to see your top 10 because maybe it'll be way different from mine. I've got Arkansas at number 10, and I don't want to put them there because I don't think they're very good. They're getting a lot of credit for preseason hype and beating what I think was a pretty bad, at least last Saturday, Cincinnati team. But I don't know who else to put here. They gave up 30 points to South Carolina today. Yes, some of it was late, but still 30 points. That's my number 10. Josh, maybe you found this a little easier than me. Let's see what your top 10 looks like. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Uh, my number one is Georgia. Um, at this point, Georgia's win over Oregon. Again, I'm not quite sure how to take it. In terms of dominating a good, a really, really good elite team, I don't think they probably dominated a top 10 team, but I think they dominated a good team. And the list of teams that have dominated good teams this season is pretty low. So that that's definitely enough to be number one. And and again, they look, no top 10 team covered today. At last I checked, none of them. Wow. Covered. So um, everybody had uh, were slow out of the gate. They were less slow than a lot of others. My number two was also a little slow, and that was Ohio State. Um, I'll go ahead and say I have Ohio State two, and I have Alabama three. And this was a little bit of a hard thing to sort of suss out of my mind because um, he took like Notre Dame and Texas. I am not sure right now, and I say this not to say I think it's true, but I am not sure that Texas isn't better than Notre Dame. Oh, Texas is better than Notre Dame. They are. I think Texas probably is better than Notre Dame. I don't know that for sure. The quarterback situation at Texas could be really problematic long term. Josh, I think Hudson other... Card is better, and I, I hate to interrupt your top ten again, but I think Hudson Card is better than anybody they've got at Notre Dame, and they've got obviously a better play caller in Texas. Yeah, no, I think both of those things are true. Please interrupt me; it just buys me time to <laughs> sort of think up what I'm going to say next. Um, no, I, I think that is true, and so you kind of keep that in mind. But I felt like Ohio State was has looked more in control, more complete. I can sort of forgive the Smith and Jigba thing. We talk a lot about injuries. I I give teams a mulligan when you lose your key player in a game or like the week of a game. So if you lose your quarterback for half the year, that's just who you are, and you have to be ranked that way. If you lose a game because your starting quarterback gets knocked out in the first quarter and the backup didn't know what he was doing, that's a little different. And... uh Ohio State was in that situation when Smith and Jigba went out against Notre Dame. So I feel like they're a more complete whole team. Though I do think the defensive issues still, like we talked about, that Notre Dame def- offense isn't enough to really test them. I still don't know where they're really at, but it's still more than enough for me to put Ohio State too. Alabama, we've talked about ad infinitum, why they're number three. Um, should be kind of obvious at this point. I think their potential is still a lot higher than most other teams on this list. Really, anybody below them. Um, defensively, they're still very, very good. Texas did not move the ball well that game. They moved it on some deep shots early. Alabama made an adjustment and put a redshirt freshman at corner, and things kind of got situated. Everything was hunky-dory, and they didn't really allow a lot the rest of the game. And the offense does have the raising reigning Heisman Trophy winner that did look really good. And they've got a lot of good pieces that will gel. So I don't really have a problem with them at three. Um, Michigan is my number four. I feel I had them, I think it was number five in the preseason. And they're right what I thought they would be. I mean, I had, they're a really good team with the same sort of core power components on offense. A, a good defense with a lot of guys filling roles that were a little underrated. Um, People saw a few big names leave, just assume they'd fall off the cliff. That hasn't happened. And I will say it's it's a tough to take it from one game, but I think you probably saw the starting quarterback today, not not last week. And they're going to be a better team with them. Uh, my number five is Clemson. They may be the best team, best defense, excuse me, in college football. 
I think their back seven is a little more suspect than people think or realize. It's been a complaint of mine or a gripe of mine about Clemson for a number of years off and on that they've had these really, really great defensive lines and sometimes really disruptive linebackers that I think mask a lot of sometimes have masked real issues in the secondary. It didn't shock me 2020 when Ohio State destroyed them um, because I feel like their back end, if you can get to the point of getting them one on one, over and over again, we've kind of seen they that's where one of the big places where their talent kind of lets them down because they recruit these number one overall players at certain positions on defensive lines, certain skill players. But there's a reason their recruiting rankings aren't higher, and it's because they don't have high four star, five stars across the board. The secondary, we need six guys at times, is where the, one of the places that tends to really show up for Clemson. Um, I will say, Club Nick only threw four passes today, and I think he had like negative passing yardage. That doesn't bode well to me for the idea that Club Nick is going to start soon. I think he probably is the future of that program. But same thing I said about Richardson last year, just because you can see all the talent in the world, he may be able to run that play that they give him that he knows how to do, but that may be one of eight plays that he knows how to run well. And you do not know the size of that playbook. It doesn't matter how good he is at running that play. That will work for spot starting in one game. And then once people have tape of it and they practice those eight plays, he is never going to be half as effective again. So he, I don't know when he'll be ready to take on a bigger role. I do think he is their future. He looks really good, but I don't think he's, maybe he's not there yet. And the way they used him today kind of made me think he's not as close as Trevor Lawrence, where they were trying to get him involved as early as possible. Uh, my number six is Oklahoma. I still, we're still early enough that I don't know what to really think of them, but I, I feel like they haven't taken as much of a step back as I would have expected uh, today against Kent state. It was a little bit sleepy. The defense looks a lot better under Venables. They just, anytime you're not giving up 20 points to everybody, you look better uh, than what Lincoln and Riley put trot out at times. Um, and I think offensively, they still have a lot of weapons. I think there's reasons to be bullish on them, but it's, it's, you know, as I said with Florida previously, it's kind of a vote for hope. Um, USC is my next pick. I thought offensively they looked as good as people thought they might against Stanford. I will say offensively and defensively, Stanford looked really bad. They are a slow team. They're not an athletic team. They haven't been particularly good in a few years. We could have a longer conversation about how you want to evaluate them. Um, I think the the Harbaugh shine has worn off a little bit. I think David Shaw is still doing a very good job of limitations they have at Stanford. I am really questioning whether Stanford's ever going to be that same kind of program again and if they can maintain it because they're not particularly good right now. So I am concerned, actually, the USC's defense did show a lot of the warts people thought might be there because they were really bad last season. Um, but right now, I think their offense is so good um, that it makes sense to have them uh, at numbers. Uh, what is that? Number seven. Uh, number eight for me is Kentucky off their win today against Florida. This is where stuff gets really, really hard. And Kentucky has a good win over a team that has a good win. I don't have a better way to justify it. Uh, so for me, that's why Kentucky's there. I think they Levis is a good quarterback. I, I think that Levis Richardson head-to-head uh, -head kind of exposed that both of them have a lot of flaws, even though they're very talented. Um, I think Kentucky's run game isn't – it showed up in the opener. It showed up again today. I, I think it's not quite what people would hope it would be. But the defense is really good again under Stoops. Uh, they are a complete team beating Florida. I think it's a pretty good deal. There's a big gap between Georgia and Kentucky, but there are not many teams to fill that gap. Uh, Baylor is my number nine. Sort of the same comment as you seeing them play beat in this slot. I, I just have no way to distinguish between these teams effectively right now. I, I watch some of Oklahoma State today. And again, I watch as much football as I can, um, but there's only so much I can process live. So I usually watch about four to five games at a time. Uh, and that's still not all of them. Uh, but I had that game on in the corner, <laughs> or even when we were starting to record this video. And I feel like their defense has taken a step back and their offense is the same sort of inconsistent spottiness that it's always been under Sanders. You see it move forward. You see a lot of potential. And at times something just kind of doesn't work and it doesn't, they don't score as much or move the ball the way they should, or there's a lot of empty drives and possessions. And my number 10, same as you as Arkansas. Um, they've got a good win over Cincinnati. That's I think a pretty good team. Uh, they, the offense looked pretty darn good against South Carolina. They gave up a, pretty, a rally late, 
my concern with Arkansas all along has been that their defense was a very mediocre defense last year in the SEC, and I expect it to be a little bit worse this year. I think that's probably true. I, there's a lot of reasons to think they're off, their defense isn't great. But again, I mean, if you have a team that you think is a clear top 10 that I haven't named, let me know. I, I, I could have made an argument for Tennessee. I could have made an argument for Wake Forest, though I don't think beating Vandy is a big deal. I could have made an argument for Ole Miss. We may end up being able to make an argument for BYU or NC State. Pitt lost. Wisconsin lost. Um, Miami's floating around there. Michigan State's floating around there and yours, but Utah's lost. Uh, Notre Dame lost. So, it, it, you know, I, you just kind of have to take the best option you can, and that's the best I could end up. So that's my top ten. I expect the back half of that will change radically by the time the season's over, but that's where I'm at right now. 